I'll tell you right now, I feel like I'm blessed. Yes, you are. There ain't many people to the Lord blesses them the way they bless me. That's right. He gave me six legs. Four of them got rollers on. Man, <laughs> uh, I tell you, ain't nobody been blessed like I have. Right. I'm going to try to preach tonight. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether you'd be able to call it preaching or not, but uh, God give me the strength. I'm going to try to get through this tonight. If you would, I'm going to try to stand. I just like to stand when I read the Word of God. In the book of Matthew 3.11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and shall he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thank you, Lord. Luke 1 and 30 and 31. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Pastor, would you pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you tonight, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, thank you for the man of God tonight, giving strength in his body. God, he touched his spirit, touched his congregation, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to, you can be seated. I'm going to title this message tonight, if you call it a message. I'm just going to probably wind up talking. That's okay. Smothering the fire. Ooh, nice. Now, I'm going to speak about two different types of fire tonight. Okay. The first one I'm going to speak about is a place called hell. Yes, sir. A lot of people don't even realize that hell is just as real as heaven. That's right. And there's more to hell than just fire and brimstone. There'll be a wars fought throughout eternity. Right. Constantly warring against each other. All the hatred and rage will be cast into hell. Think about it. Being in there with all the rage that's going on and the wars that's going on. And I don't know, most of you has read the Bible all the way through, but if you read the last part, last chapter of the book of Revelation, you'll find out that if you take away or add to right, that's right. this book right here, that's right. Yes, sir. every plague every disease that's in this book will be added to you if you don't make it. That's right. That's right. That's but what I'm trying to tell you tonight, I'm on, I'm, now you've heard some of this stuff preached before. Sure. And uh, you've heard uh, brother, brother, Sister Chris and Brother Mark preach about Elijah. But I'm going to try to take this just a little bit different direction tonight. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think happened. Go ahead. Will that be all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. When Elijah built that altar to the Lord, he dedicated that altar to the Lord. That sacrifice was dedicated to the Lord. Right. All right? Baal built him, and they, his uh, prophets built him an altar. But the prophets of Baal, I believe, were possessed. Because if you remember what the Bible talk, talking about, when they couldn't get nothing to happen, they jumped up on the altar and cut themselves till the blood gushed down. Now, who in their right mind would have done something like that? That's right. They had to, but some, some kind of devil was inside of them men. But I'm going to tell you something. The same fire, when he built, it had come down from heaven. When I sacrifice is over, if you read the Bible through the Old Testament, every sacrifice that was offered up to the Lord was the Lord loved it so much if it was offered up right. Right. The Lord loved the smell of it. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. 
He really loved to spell it. But for this, this, to me, this offering right here was very special to me. In the Bible, the Lord comes in many different forms. Two that really stands out to me is the form of fire. And then the cloud that uh, led the children of Israel to the wilderness. But I want to tell you something. When Elijah offered up that sacrifice and began to call upon the name of the Lord, I believe with all my heart that the Lord just could not stand it. He loved the smell of that sacrifice so much that, that He had to come down. He came down. That was God Himself coming down in the form of fire. And the smell was so great that he consumed the sacrifice, the wood, the rocks, and licked up all the water that's in the ditch. That's right. Now I'll tell you something. Right. That right there is something that uh, really stuck out to me because God is in the form of fire. Uh -huh. He's been in the fire, a form of fire all through the Bible. Right. Now I'm going to tell you what. He was the same fire in the burning bush. Right. Uh -huh. the, that was God in that burning bush. Right. It could not be consumed. Yes, he was the same God that delivered the children of Israel out of bondage. He was the same fire that opened up the Red Sea. He was the same fire that led the children of Israel out of bondage. Right. He was the same fire that went into the fire to bring the Hebrew boys out. He was the same fire that went into the down, down the lines to set the lion's mouth. Right. Now I'm going to tell you something. That takes something right there to mean that there's a fire that we, when we get the Holy Ghost, we got that same fire. We don't may probably don't even realize it a lot of times, Brother Creasy, but we got that same fire that's shut up in our bones, in our side of our, in our hearts. But I'm going to tell you, that is the same fire that was called down from heaven with a sacrifice with Elijah. That was the same fire that was in the burning bush. When you received the Holy Ghost, that is the fire that was burning back then. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Everything seems to be going good for everybody. You know, and I want to go back to, I ain't going to hold you long because I ain't got enough wind tonight, I don't think. But I'm going to go back. Now, John baptized with water unto repentance. He said, it's one coming after me with shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Right. But I want to tell you something. In the book of Luke, when the angel appeared unto Mary and told her she was going to have a son and going to call his name Jesus, she had a beautiful little baby boy. Yeah. Can you imagine when somebody has a child, you know how beautiful it is, you know? Had a beautiful little baby boy. Now I'm going to change that just a little bit and tell you what I think that was. That beautiful little baby boy was nothing but a beautiful little ball of fire. The fire, now back through the Old Testament, the children of Israel, every time that God would bless them, they would throw dirt on the fire. They'd smother it out. God would bless them again. They'd throw dirt on the fire and smother it out. Blessed after blessed after blessed, they would throw dirt on the fire and smother it out. Till finally it come down to this. Twenty and above perished in the wilderness simply because they smothered out the fire. They could not cross over because there wasn't no fire in their lives left. I'm going to tell you right now, we got to have that fire down inside of us or we're not going to make it. We've got to have the Holy Ghost moving in our lives like we've never had before, or we're not going to make it. We've got to have it, people. That little ball of fire that come out was born to, in, the, in the form of a uh, bare head. Was, and he called his name Jesus. The fire was rekindled. And it had been smothered out all the way down through the books. So if you follow the Old Testament, 
Every time God blessed them through the Old Testament, they smothered the fire out. By the time it got down to the day that Jesus was born, there was no fire left in Israel. It was completely smothered out. They didn't have anything going. The Bible tells us he came to his own and his own received him not. I'm going to tell you right now, when there's no fire burning like that, something's, going to, not, something's not right. You've got to have the fire within you or in, in the side of the buildings of this church to really do what God wants us to do. Now, When Jesus ascended into heaven, there was a couple of men standing by, and they were gazing up in heaven watching Jesus go up. That's right. But he had told them, said, I want you to go back to Jerusalem and tear there until you are endured with subdued with power from on high. So, Jesus ascended up into heaven and they stand there gazing. Can you imagine after being with Jesus all that time and just watching him go up? Yeah. Yeah. What, it, what kind of a thought that they had in their mind that they like, really thinking they was losing everything they had simply because their God was gone. But I'm going to tell you that people, the guys that were standing there said, why are you standing here gazing up? That same Jesus is coming back likewise. And I'm telling you, I'm looking for him tonight, Brother Tracy. I'm looking for him to come back one of these days. People worry about me getting old and dying. I don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you right now, if I, if the, I believe it was Paul said, be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. And that's exactly what I want. But, but one of these days when I'm absent from this old body right here, this old body ain't no count anymore. It's no more out. And I'm going to tell you right now, but when I leave this old body, I'm going to be present with Christ. I'm going to be sitting at his feet. And I'm going to be running all over heaven. I'm going to tell you right now, that's exactly what I want and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I ain't going to worry about dying, I'm going to tell you right now. If I die, let me, it's not my will, but His will. Whatever His will is, is my will. And that's exactly the way I want it to be. They went back to Jerusalem. And I could have just pictured them walking up into that upper room. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, else. they didn't walk up there and just stand around and talk. They went up there, and I believe as they each one of them entered into that upper room, I believe they fell on their knees and began to pray. Right. And I'm going to tell you what, they done got that promise that they was going to get that power from on high. And I'm going to tell you what, if we do that right now tonight, if we listen to what the Word of God said and what, it, what we want to do in with our lives, we'll do whatever God wants us to do. I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Ghost will overshadow us. And I'm going to tell you right now, there'll be a Holy Ghost movement of God that you'll never believe that God could exist in coming to Tennessee. I'm going to tell you, I believe right now, Sister Tracy, with all of my heart, that there's going to be a revival break loose here one of these days like you have never seen before. There's going to be people walking through that front door back there that's never heard the truth preached. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe with all of my heart that when they hear the truth preached, they're going to open up their heart. And they're going to be able to come all on their knees in this altar. And Brother Treach is going to stick them on the water back there. And they're going to come out of that water speaking that tongue. Amen. You know why I say that? Because on the day of Pentecost, we're full of come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And it appeared under them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set up on each of them. And they were all, not just one or two, they were all. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have a people coming in here one of these days. It's not going to be just one or two people that's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But all is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And begin to speak with them. As the Spirit of God gave them utterance. I'm going to tell you what, that's the one of the you ever been in. I'm going to tell you, I've been, I've been high on drugs, I've been high on whiskey, I've been high on a little bit of everything in this country, but I have never been so high in my life when I can turn my life over to the Lord. Now that is a high you'll never forget. Amen. 
God, I feel Holy Ghost right now. Bye, Mama. Well, uh, man, that first message was finished on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Oh, Peter's still up there with the 11. <laughs> and he said, this is not the book about a prophet Joel in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You old men dream dreams. Young men see visions. Brother Chris, if you see me over here asleep, don't wake me up because I'm a dreaming. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the way I'm going to be. That's just like it was on the day of Pentecost. They were shouting. They were shouting. They, and Peter looked out that these men are not drunk as you suppose said it's but the third hour of the day but this is that that was spoken way back down the road that's coming to pass and I'm going to tell you right now we need the Holy Ghost to move like they never moved before Amen. Amen. My, my, my. Lord Lord Jesus Oh, Peter stood up out there and began to preach that first minute. He said, repent and be baptized every one of you. Now, some churches, I'm telling you right now, now this is what I was talking about earlier, about the about last chapter of the book of Revelation, about uh, 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 taking away and adding to. Now, sometimes they'll, they'll do that. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, quote that scripture. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you. But you know, a lot of them will stop right there, Sister Grace. They've taken away from it. They've taken away from it. And they're adding their own stuff to it. They don't believe you have to have the Holy Ghost anymore. But I'm going to tell you what, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what it took back then is going to take today. And I don't care what people say. Just go, you're going to have to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's exactly what it's going to take. It don't change. It ain't changed over 2,000 years. It's still going on today. It's still God going to have a church today and tomorrow. These days he's gonna bust them east his guys open. And I'll tell you right now, I play what I want when they, when he comes back, you, there's gonna be a movement like you've never seen. There's gonna be people I don't want I wanted a lot of times. How many people will be sitting on a bar stool when he comes back? How many people will be at a ball game when he's hollering and yelling when he comes back? How many people will how many wives will be off of some other man's husband? Or how many husbands will be off of some other man's wife when he comes back? But I'm gonna tell you one thing, he's coming back and he's gonna take his people with him. It was and ready to go, and I'll tell you right, that's the reason I don't never worry about dying. Mama gets worried about sometimes about being doing something and kicking the bucket. I don't care. Let it come. What his will is and my will and what my will is and his will. That's exactly the way I want it. And I ain't gonna smother the fire to do it. Am I done all right, Pastor? Need some water? I got something right here. Alright. tell you here, people. I love you guys with all my heart. Mama will tell you, I, just, I bring y'all up a lot of times. When I'm at home, we talk about and uh, how good the people are here. How wonderful they are. How much we appreciate them. And I let you know everything I've told you before. But every night, before I close my eyes, 
I pray for every individual in this church. And if I don't, if I miss a person, as I tell the Lord, I say, Lord, if I miss anybody, you know exactly who they are. But I want to tell you something. I believe one of these days, I still say it, and I've said it when I, before, you're going to see a move of God here that you ain't going to be able to see them, Brother Chrissy. You're not going to be able to see them with what you got. I believe that's coming. And I believe it's not far off. But I'm going to tell you what, it's going to take me and you. It's going to take all of us. We're going to have to stir that fire up. And if we got any dirt that's going over, stirring over that fire to smother it out, we better get it off Amen. of it. And we better rekindle that fire. I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't rekindle that fire, the fire is going to go out. I'm telling you what, it's something some of the churches is having one service a week that gives the devil six days to work on it. Some of the people in that congregation, that some of them have it two services a week. That gives the devil five days to work on some of the people in that congregation. But I'm going to tell you what I think about those pastors that don't have them but one or one two services. I think it's flat out laziness. Now that's what I think. Now if you want to put that on Facebook somewhere, I, I don't care. I'll tell them right to the face. It ain't nothing but flat out laziness. The, we, need, we need a move of God. Every church needs to stir up that fire that says, uh, what did God give us the Holy Ghost for? Why did He give us the Holy Ghost for? He gave us the Holy Ghost to keep us stirred up. We need to throw a stick on that fire place. We need to build up that coals again. We need a fire moving in this church tonight. I believe one of these days we're going to see that revival coming like we've never seen it before. Now, right now I'm going to tell you, if we don't stir it up, if we don't stir it up, something is going to happen here. We're going to have a, a begin to smother out little by little. But if we can keep that fire burning down inside of us and keep that Holy Ghost moving, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be like you've never seen before. And I believe with all my heart. That's what I pray for. That's what I pray for. Every night and every day that I pray, I want a movement of God like we have never seen before here in this Covington Church in Covington, Tennessee. That's what I want to see in here. I want the fire burning so bright that when people die down that road out there, they will actually feel a tug to go to this church. And I've seen it happen before and it will happen again. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all stay on about 7 o'clock in the morning. Let me get that one before I got here. Oh, I'd love to see y'all later. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to battle. We used up all my way. But, uh, but I'm going to tell you something. People. Talking about move of God, I've seen. I've seen people that's in wheelchairs moved. God moved, and they would have, God would heal them. I've seen them actually run down the aisle, get up out of that wheelchair and run down the aisle. But do you know what happened right after they run down that aisle? They took them back, set them right back in that wheelchair. That was, I thought that was one of the most stupidest things that I ever heard and saw in my life. To put them right back, put them right back in that wheelchair. That's not right. If God heals you, let it stay, let it stay, stay healed, Sister Crazy. Don't try to move back and shove it back. A lot of people try to shove things back in their lives. Uh-uh. Bring everything out. Let the fire bring it out. Let the fire burn again. Move like it's never moved before. I want to tell you right now, let's move like we've never moved before. Let's pray harder. Let's get on our knees every night before we go to bed. Let's pray like we've never prayed before because that's what's going to get us out here. Prayer and the Word of God is what's going to get us out of this church. We've got what's going to take us up there. I'm ready to go. I don't know what about you. But anytime the Lord wants to take me out here, I'm ready. I want to go. I'm looking forward to it. 
one of these days, I'm going to walk down that Dollar Street. I'm going to see them walls of Jasper, and I'm going to stand yeah. back and look at that pearly gate. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right there, it's going to be beautiful, something yeah. that you can't even imagine. That's what I want. You know, a lot of people don't worry about dying. Part of living. That's right. When I die, don't weep for me. No, Be happy for me. Yes, Be happy for me. Because I'm going to be enjoying myself. I'm going to really be enjoying myself. I, don't, I hope that I've helped you. Yes, sir. I hope I've done something. They encourage me. But I'm going to tell you this. We have got to keep the fire burning. Amen. We cannot smother that fire. That's right. We've got to keep it burning, Brother Mom. No way can we keep that fire burning unless we stay on our knees. Amen. We've got to pray constantly. Pray constantly for one another. And that's what it's going to take. You see somebody that's had a little problem, talk to God about it. Move. God would move in a lot of ways you wouldn't think He'd move. But I'm going to tell you, I hope something I said tonight or something that uh, I love you, dear. I appreciate you so much. With all my heart. Brother Mark. <laughs> if you would, let's come around the altar and let's pray tonight. So thankful that we've been had the privilege to hear the Word of God preached. Let's pray and ask the Lord to touch your circumstances tonight.
beautiful message tonight brother Jim I thoroughly was challenged by that and I thank you for that and I tell you just the life you live is an inspiration to me and, and I just thank you for that you know I tell him this a lot in private I don't think he'll mind me sharing it but you know I think he had a stroke and two days later he was preaching and you know those of you that may have never been in ministry or you, you may have never been where I am where he is and it just tells me I'm going to make it. And it shows me that I don't have to quit. And that if the enemy throws his best, I can still make it. And so I'm challenged by your endurance and I thank you, brother. Your, your life is just a blessing to me and that message tonight was truly good and I appreciate that. Give, you, give the Lord a hand clap. So, so thankful. So challenging. All right, do we have any uh, any prayer requests tonight? Yes, ma'am. Roxanne? Okay. And uh, over here, anyone else? A prayer request tonight? Your father, sure. Okay. Here in the center, anybody? A prayer need tonight? All right, over here. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Yes, ma'am. We'll sure do that. Any other prayer needs? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so blessed this evening. And God, I pray that each one of us will have heard the Word tonight and go out and do the spiritual disciplines that will make that possible, Lord, that we'll have a prayer life and that we'll read the Word and that we'll desire that close fellowship that comes through the fire of the Holy Spirit. I pray for each man, woman, and child in this church tonight that God, you'll touch and bless them and uh, ignite that flame inside of them that, Lord, they will always have the assurance that you're with them, that nothing's impossible, and that you can do all things. And God, we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you'll touch all these needs. Lord, we've heard needs that have been presented here tonight. I don't know if they're healing needs, whatever, but God, you know, and I pray for a touch to each one that you'll touch them in a special way, supernaturally, Lord, that you might receive the credit. And I pray, Lord, that you'll touch each one as they depart this place and that you'll bring us back again safely. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.